самая осторожная дверь. Наверное. Friends, we are finally ready to tell you where we're going. You might have already guessed that we're going to the national park called the Land of Leopards. This is the main area of habitat of this wild, beautiful, spotted cat in our country. Today, there are more than 91 animals in Russia, and more of them live in Primorsky Krai in the Khazansk region. We have finally reached. Hello. Welcome, you have arrived to be the guest at the Land of Leopards and you will visit our popular path that goes through the Land of Leopards. You will see the leopard lair where you can see caves where leopards usually have their resting space and you also will visit our paths. The reason of creating this national park is to educate about the majestic animal as well as reconstruct the population of the animal. And such goals are impossible to achieve if people are not educated. So the National Park does not only protect the wild cat, but also educate the people about them. You can find a few tourist locations in the park, and the path that we'll be visiting is one of them. The National Park is not only a place of big wild cats, but you can also meet such cute domestic cats that are very talkative and welcoming. The first place you will see when you get to the National Park is the visit center. Here you will be able to find out more about the National Park and its lands, tour options, and of course, what are the spotted animals of this region. We need tourists here. They will tell us what they want to see. We will provide options available and tell them the prices of the service we provide, safety instructions and other situations that they need. What are the base prices that tourists usually ask about if they want to go on individual paths or go with a guide? There are two individual paths that are available in the Path of Leopards. There is one right next to the visit center called the Path of Leopards. And then there is Semiverse. That's right. The entrance price is 90 rubles for adults and seniors, and children have discounts. Seniors get 50% off, and ch children under 12 go in for free. And what about pricing for guides? Guides are only available for a group of minimum of 10 people, and the price per person is 210 rubles. Here you can find a brochure about how to act if you meet the animal and how to act in the forest. Also, you'll find basic procedures if you meet wild animals on your path and information about other animals you can find here. During my time of working here, I have almost met a tiger a couple of times. Well, I heard them. I saw a wild boar once and deers twice. The most dangerous animal in this area are tigers. And the way to make sure you're safe if you come across a moving animal is to keep away from it. And if the animal is moving towards you, you should move to the side for at least 50 to 100 meters, or preferably more. But normally, wild animals try to keep away. So far, we have not had accidents in the park, and it has been very safe here. Apart from giving instructions to visitors, we also provide photos of leopards from the photo cameras hidden around the national park. It is very rare case to be able to meet them nearby the tourist paths or even in the forest. There are animals that hide and are very secretive and only a few of us have actually seen them. How many leopards are there right now on the territory of the national park? And how many cameras do you have hidden around here? The first count happened in 1978 and we had only 33 cats. Now there are 91 adult cats and 22 kittens. How many cameras do you have in the national park? Well, at this stage, there are more than 420 cameras. This is one of the biggest photo monitoring areas in Russia. Most likely you will not meet a leopard in the forest, but you can hug a family representative in the visit center. Now we're walking among the most popular path of our national park. 
called the Path of Leopards. Over 3,000 to 4,000 people visit this path annually. And that is from the 7,000 people that visit us each year. How long is this path? This path is 1.8 kilometers and it's circular. And the highest peak of the path is 123.7 meters above sea level. Who can take this path? Anyone can go here. We have had kids that are three years old, hiking up, as well as 70-year-old grandparents. What are the unique points of the path? This path gives very vast information about the geological factors of our territory. And there are two sightseeing areas available. The path has information boards, that have historical information about the territory of a certain time. This stand, for example, is about the Barabash village. Have leopards ever passed by here? During the whole time of learning about leopards in this region, only one leopard has ever visited this area. We call him the actor Tolstoy Buzan Barabashsky. Who came up with such names? The locals. Why? He is a very big cat. Was he fat? No, he wasn't fat, but typically a male adult leopard is around 80 kilos. But this particular cat was close to 90 kilos based onto the photo analysis of the animal. What are the rare plants you can find here? As far as I'm aware, this area has many rare plants that you can paint a full picture of what is the flora and fauna of the taiga. Well, not exactly the full picture of taiga, but we do have many plants some can be found here are very rare. For example, you can find Korean pine, Kretaraktori, Kalipiens, and other plants. We have arrived to the new plantations of the Korean pine. These plantations have been done in 1995, so they're only growing here for 25 years or so. And look at them now, they already have reached two to three meters in height. This particular tree lives up to 500 years and can reach the heights that are 50 meters. I have seen some pines so big that even four of me would not be able to hug them. We have reached the information zone about the plants that you can find in the land of leopards. Here tourists and kids can play a few games matching the plants to its name and the plant fruit. And they can also see different cuts of trees. Okay, let's try. I don't know any of these. This one is very easy to match. Well, I guess it's not easy for me. Oh, I see ginger. This looks about right, and the flower should be this. Am I correct? Yes, you're absolutely correct. If you match one plant, you'll be able to match the rest. And that way you can learn about new plants that you were never aware about before. And this is the most favorite thing on this path, the hanging bridge. There is no particular name for it, but tourists like using it because of the way you walk on it, and when you go through the middle, you'll feel a bit of disbalance. And also people say that one of these bridges actually grants wishes. Maybe it's this one. So I will make a wish. Is this another game? Yes. Here tourists are invited to match the animals to the paw marks. This is like Poly Chudias and Animal Planet is in one. You can say so as well. Wild boar should be this, squirrel matching, and the bear. Looks about right. Mm. 
Also, over here you can check your height based onto the animal size. Have I reached four foxes? No, not yet. You're about three and three quarters. Around 26 mice. Two and a half leopards. One and one third of a deer. And just one third under the size of an actual bear. passing the fixtures from around 1930s. We have reconstructed such areas so tourists could see how it was back in the day. Such fixtures can be found all over Hassan region. At some ages you can find concrete fixtures that remind us of bunkers. Now we were told that they will take us to some top secret place. So far, tourists don't visit there, and we will be one of the first. We will need to walk for around one kilometer, and at some place we will need to cross over waters, so we will be given boots, and these actually fit just right. Here you can see one of our photo cameras, and this place is very interesting. If you see, it's actually faced towards one particular tree. The reason why it's faced here is that this tree is a tiger marking tree. Here tigers mark themselves. You can see this dark spot. This is where they mark the territory. And if you try to smell it, sometimes it's very strong so you know that the animal is close by. But right now there is no smell, so tigers have not visited in a while. The reason why they mark this particular tree is because this tree is on their path and bends over the path. So they prefer such trees to mark. Also, this is a soft bark tree and tigers do prefer birch, cedar and plants that have soft bark because it feels good for them to scratch them. Right now, we are in the area where photo monitoring has started. The photo monitoring in the land of leopards started for educational purposes. Back then, we wanted to find out technical factors of leopards and tigers to be able to count them and know each one of them. We did not plan to have high quality, beautiful artistic images. But because we have such vast areas covered with cameras, some of the images are just majestic. There is a great number of video footage and photos. We even have selfies of tigers, bears, leopards, and photos of videos of actual animals tearing apart the cameras that we have planted. There are a big number of pictures where they rest. The main point is to be able to find a place that is good for them and figure out what they might do. We did not try to achieve to have people visiting us as ecological education tourism, but it happened naturally, thanks to the photos that we have. Now people want to take such photos and we teach them how to do such thoughts and explain techniques behind this. Now 
We are about to reach the area where we have photo hunting. And this is where we take photos of big cats. This is one of our photo bases where we take photos from the windows that are small but areas for the cameras are big enough. This looks like an ambush. Well, in a way, it feels like that way, and the lens can be placed right through this hole. And how long do you need to stay in such a place to be able to take a photo? It all depends on luck. We are just giving an opportunity, but we can't guarantee there will be photos. I don't exactly remember that a photographer has not taken a photo and left us without seeing an animal. Some photographers will miss their opportunity and some fall asleep. But mainly, they will be able to visit and see some of the leopards. Normally, a person can stay here up to two weeks without having to leave the house. This house has everything. Heating, kitchen, beds. The only thing you need to bring with you is food and water. And other things needed so you can cook here and whatnot. We have a high number of videographers and photographers who come to us, including some very famous TV channels that take videos about animals. Some of the most interesting things you could film, in my opinion, is filming a mother with her kittens. And you can take some beautiful images of the resting area of cats. Of course, ideas of being able to film the hunting of the actual animal and how they hunt and who they hunt would be very interesting footage. But so far, so good, we have not been able to get such footage filmed. And what do people need to be able to do to visit this particular place? They need to go on our website, send us a request and match the available schedule and prepare for the trip. How can you help our unique cat by inviting people to the Usiriskaya Taiga? Well, first of all, we're building a tourist infrastructure that does not only affect the surrounding areas, but is teaching visitors how to be acting in a natural park and actually be part of the nature without hunting the animal or hurting it. And we also tell people about our cats, how to not trash the area. And that is if we're talking about the ecotourism side of things. If we're talking about the benefits, the money that come from tourism give us the opportunity to grow the area and being able to invest in the protection of the species. And this helps to develop the area for the animal. Tourism gives opportunities for the locals in the area to go away from hunting and destroying the culture around here and the nature around here by creating the place for rest for the tourists, restaurants, and all the things that surround tourism. This is only part of the things you could see in the land of leopards. We haven't shown you all the pots and all the spots out there for the reason that you can discover them on your own when you visit the land of leopards.